We're meeting a council to order Monday, October 4th, 2021. Uh, approval of the agenda, please. Recommendation, Council Majority. At the Monday, October 4th, 2021, regular council meeting agenda be adopted as presented. Sorry, before that, Councillor. Um, Announcing participants. Anthony I should have asked for an addition to the agenda, Councillor Kalka. Yeah, before we do that, I'd like to add uh, BC Ambulance and Northern Health. And that's just for discussion. Uh, I sent an email out to council members. Okay, seconder. Councilman Jinsky, discussion. All in favor? Any opposed on the phone? Carried, thank you. So we will add that in new business. <clears throat> Point two five. Okay. Approval of the amended agenda, please. Councilman Majinski. The Monday, October 4th, 2020, regular council meeting agenda be amended as presented. Be adopted as amended. Adopted as amended, sorry. Thank you. Seconder, Councilor Norbury. All in favor? Opposed? Most on the phone. Carried, thank you. Adoption of the minutes. Recommendation, please. Councillor Lehman. To Monday, September 20th, 2021. Regular meeting of council minutes be adopted as presented. Seconder. Councillor Korkalka. Any omissions or additions? All in favor? Opposed? Carried, thank you. Any business arising from the minutes? Council? Staff? Thank you. And moving on to delegations and petitions. We have a delegation from Coastal Gaslink, Social Effects Management Plan. Senator Disarmi, Kyle Giddens, and Senior Weaver of Coastal Gaslink to provide an update on impacts of project work. We have them on the line. Uh, good evening, everyone. Hello, good evening, Your Worship. Thank you for having us this evening. Thank you for I being think here. for sake of timing, we will go ahead and get started if that's okay with you. Absolutely, please. Absolutely. So thank you for having us today. We are happy to appear virtually with an update on the Coastal Gas Pipeline Project. I am joined here by a few members of the team. Um, so I've got Barrett Kennedy on the line here. He's our socioeconomic advisor. I'm also joined by Melanie Chandra project engineer on work package one. And I've also got Anthony Haywood Smith, our project manager at our Wild Lake compressor station. So you've got our group here today to provide an update on our project, including a snapshot into the work taking place in the Peace River Regional District. Barrett will also be leading our discussion as we review the socio-economic effects management plan as well. <coughs> Most importantly, our team is here to answer any questions that you may have. So next slide, please. For those of you not as familiar uh, with Coastal GasLink and TC Energy, uh, Coastal GasLink is being built and will be operated by TC Energy. TC Energy is a Calgary-based company and one of North America's largest natural gas pipeline networks with over 90,000 kilometers of pipeline. Coastal GasLink, of course, is our most significant investment in BC. We continue to advance investments and projects that support our global efforts of reducing greenhouse gas emissions, expanding renewables, and supporting research. We believe that we have a critical role to play in delivering responsibly produced energy. Next slide. So at approximately 670 kilometers in length, the Coastal Gas Link Pipeline Project will safely deliver natural gas across Northern BC. So after Coastal Gas Link delivers the natural gas from Dawson Creek to a facility near Kitimat, LNG Canada will then prepare it for export to global markets. So as you can see on the map here, sections one and two of the project are located right here within the Peace River Regional District. Next slide. So this past year has seen some pretty significant milestones along the, along the project. We continue to safely move forward with construction activities while still abiding by the industrial camps order, keeping the health and safety of our workers and the communities at the forefront. So to date, we've hit about 50% completion on the project. 
We're also celebrating the completion of the Kitimat meter station. This facility marks the end of the coastal gas link pipeline where natural gas will be measured, inspected for quality, and delivered to the LNG Canada plant. We're also continuing to see our workforce grow to over 4,700 personnel. This surpasses our previous height, or our previous highest count last fall of 4,000 workers. We're also happy to share that we've reached the highest elevation point along the right-of-way for our construction activity. We've hit a point of approximately 101 and a half kilometers above sea level out in Section 8. And if we look more specifically here within the Peace region, we've recently completed the Burnt River water crossing. So across the route, we're seeing all stages of pipeline construction activity. The photo on the right-hand side here is the recently completed Kitimat meter station out in Section 8. Next slide. So I'll now focus on our project progress made within Work Package 1. So specifically, we're looking at the Ground Birch area towards east of Cloud Lake. The prime contractor for this section is Sereris Murphy Joint Venture. So our pipeline activities for 2021 have included um, completing all of the clearing, and we've reached about 87% completion for grading. We've placed another 90 kilometers of pipe in the ground, and we continue to progress the water crossing at the Sekunker River. Our teams have also been focusing their attention to the challenging steep slope work at the Burnt and Merrick Mountain areas. So you'll see here the photo on the right-hand side is a snapshot of some of the steep and challenging terrain our construction teams are navigating here right within the Peace region. Definitely no easy feat. Next slide, please. So as we also look within the Peace region, uh, for Coastal Gas Link, we have the construction activity taking place for the Wild Lake Compressor Station and the Ground Birch Connector. So for the Wild Lake Compressor Station, the prime contractor here is Acon, and they've been moving forward with the large bore piping installation and the ongoing compressor unit construction. They've also seen some electrical and instrumentation work continuing. For the Ground Birch Connector, Sereris Murphy Joint Venture is also the prime contractor responsible for this portion of the project. Stringing is underway and the majority of the construction work will be completed by the end of 2021 for the connector. So when we look at all of these components together, towards the end of August, we saw approximately 950 personnel working here within the Peace region on Coastal Gas Link. So our teams were leveraging a blend of local hotels and rentals in both Dawson Creek and Chetwind, paired with our lodge use. So we have three workforce accommodations that we're using here in the Peace region. So we've got the Sonata Lodge to house our Wild Lake workforce, and then also the Sekunka Lodge and Mount Merrick um, lodges as well for the pipeline crews. So the photo on the right-hand side here is a snapshot uh, from the Wild Lake uh, compressor station site last week and you can see the magnitude of the facility and the pieces coming together. Next slide, please. We've covered quite a bit of ground this far and we've got continued momentum into 2021 and 2022. Within the Peace region, our teams are preparing to complete the Sekunka River crossing. We're looking at getting an additional 30 kilometers of pipe in the ground and we're looking at continuing with the cleanup and reclamation activities in some areas of the right of way. Over at the Wild Lake Compressor Station, our team's looking forward to moving along with the welding and additional pipe work. Both Acon and Sereris Murphy are planning to work up until the December holidays with a remobilization plan within the first quarter of 2022. So this photo on the right-hand side here was taken earlier this month. It showcases pipe in the ground and some preliminary backfilling work taking place. Next slide, please. So, I want to reiterate our number one commitment, which is for value and that safety. Our contractors and, op and operators have implemented extensive protocols based on the guidance from the provincial and local health authorities to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. So back in July, the provincial health officer um, introduced the industrial camps order that was revised to actually lift a number of COVID-19 measures. As part of the order, Industrial projects like Coastal Gas Link transitioned from what we call the COVID-19 management plan 
to a communicable disease prevention plan. The measures that we have in place have been reviewed by Northern Health and meet all of the provincial health officers' guidance to keep our workers, families, and communities safe. So some of these measures include, um, of course, the ongoing testing and the testing for newly arriving workers, wearing masks as required, uh, daily self-monitoring and symptom checking, and of course, frequent hand washing. We're also supporting the implementation of vaccines to workers. And we also have strict consequences for those not adhering to the measures, including dismissal. So whether it's been adding additional me medical expertise where needed, ensuring we're pre-screening or the daily symptom check, it's all part of our zero is real safety mandate. And now I'm gonna turn the discussion over uh, to Barrett to continue on our conversation. Good evening. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to provide uh, an overview of our project's socioeconomic program and share a quick update. As I understand, uh, we have about 10 minutes for this presentation, so I think we're, we're over by a minute already, so I'm going to run through this uh, a little quickly because the Q&A is most important, I think, to our team. Uh, so if you could uh, please move to the next slide. So Coastal GasLink implements a socioeconomic effects management plan that includes a commitment, a regulatory commitment to reach out to a minimum of twice a year to engage on potential socioeconomic effects. That's a regulatory minimum. Of course, Heather and I are always available to discuss anything as it occurs. Uh, we also share a, a status report with you twice a year, which describes the project's socioeconomic monitoring and mitigation. Our current reporting cycle will cover the month of June through November, and we're gonna share that report with you this coming December. Uh, we plan to include apprenticeship information, uh, as well as waste management updates, uh, as well as regular items like lodge occupancy forecasts, uh, workforce use of telecommunications, as well as road and traffic updates. If you could move to the next slide, please. So these are some examples of the potential impacts to local economies that we monitor. Uh, the economic resilience, contracting and trimming are big ones. If you wouldn't mind moving to the next slide, please. And we also monitor topics related to social and community infrastructure. Health and, and, and emergency services are very important for our project, as well as social services and waste management. You can see some other examples there as well. Wouldn't mind moving to the next slide, please. During our reporting cycle, for a lot of feedback from communities across the north, uh, key items for our project to monitor always include economic impact as well as education and training opportunities. Uh, COVID-19 has been top of mind. We're hearing a lot about mitigating our workforce's use of local health services, uh, coastal gas links efforts to boost vaccination rates in our workforce, and how the project supports employees' mental health during uh, such a difficult time. There's been a strong interest uh, to discuss housing across northern BC. Quite curious to hear if uh, the community has any comments related to that. A coastal gas link is working quite hard to ensure our workforce has no unintended impacts to our local commercial, uh, i.e. hotels or rental service capacity. So with that, uh, I'll thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to share an update. And uh, please let me know if you may have any further questions during our Q&A session. So Heather, back to you. Great, thanks Barrett. So if I could have everyone um, change over to the next slide um, titled Economic Development and Community Partnerships. Um, We'll leave it here, but I will share a few final notes as I know we are definitely approaching and or have overpassed our uh, dedicated time slot. But just a few final comments. Are proud to be a part of BC's healthy economic recovery. These opportunities will bring benefits to British Columbia and Canada and can help drive the economic recovery in Northern BC. Now, of course, construction jobs are part of this. But we've also seen the $1.25 billion awarded in Indigenous and local contracting opportunities in the North, with over $261 million awarded to local businesses within the Peace region. We've also got our Community Investment Program, where we've seen over $8.5 million given back to communities through community investments. You'll see here, I've got um, a few photos featured um, from the support that our team provided uh, for the, rem the safe removal of the dinosaur tracks discovered in the region um, alongside the Peace Region Paleontology Research Center and the UNESCO Glio Global Geopark. So in the longer term, you know, 
We're looking to become one of the largest property tax payers in the North with over $21 million to be paid to local governments, hospital districts, and school districts annually. Our project agreements with 21st Nations across the corridor will provide long-term benefits for decades to come. So at this time here, I will, you know, I will kindly mention next slide. As you'll see here, there are uh, the many ways that you can reach out and stay connected to our team. And of course, we now welcome any questions that you may have. Thank you very much, Heather and, and Barrett. I appreciate the presentation. Council, any questions? <clears throat> Um, I have recently heard of uh, some new protests uh, along the route, Heather. I'm, I'm just wondering if you could update us on, on that, possibly. Yes, Your Worship. No, that's a very great comment. Um, our top priorities are the safety of our people and local and, and Indigenous communities and protection of the environment. So we do respect the rights of others to peacefully and lawfully express their point of view and understand that there is opposition to the project. So just a reminder that our activities are permitted and in order to safely conduct our work. And we do, we are operating under an enforceable injunction that is in place that does prohibit interference with our construction activities. And that includes those within the vicinity of the Morris River. So. We're continuing to safely navigate our construction in the area, um, working alongside um, you know, local governments and playing a listening ear to their dialogue, as well as uh, working alongside um, the RCMP. So we are committed to delivering this critical energy infra infrastructure project and any risk to safety in our workforce or others in the vicinity is of the highest importance to us. So. We're keeping our lines of communication open um, with all local governments and communities along the route and really all of British Columbia. And um, we're staying to in an effort to really resolve our differences. And our preference is to always seek peaceful solutions through constructive dialogue. So last week we shared an update uh, with you and it should have hit your inbox and you can let me know if you didn't receive it and I will pass it along again. Um, we shared a project statement uh, from our president, Tracy Robinson, just sharing updates there. And we'll continue to be sharing those updates as we receive them over email as well. But um, definitely feel free to reach out um, to our team directly for any further questions. But um, we are able to safely move forward with the construction activities in that area. Good. Thank you for that, Heather. <clears throat> Council, any questions? <clears throat> I'm just wondering how far this pandemic has pushed this project back and what that's going to do to, you know, the, the financial recovery of this whole project. No, and that's a really great question. I mean, we've all been operating under the pandemic landscape and um, we definitely started off earlier this year um, with an absolute limited workforce. So, um, you know, just as we were working alongside uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry and um, navigating, you know, a safe way to move forward with construction. So we're happy to share that, um, you know, our project managers and our construction managers have really come together to identify a way to move forward that is keeping our project um, still on time with an anticipated in-service date of 2023. As we, all as we had planned originally. So we're happy to share that. But of course, um, we will share any further updates should there be any changes to the anticipated in-service date in the future. But um, so far from a commercial in-service standpoint, we are still on track. Good. Thank you. Council, any further questions? Ms. Thompson, did you have any? None. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Heather, for the update. Very much appreciated, and uh, good luck in the future. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for having us, uh, your worship and council, and have a wonderful evening. You as well. Thank you. Thank you. Participants visiting. Anthony Haywood-Smith. Yeah.
<laughs> Heather Desarmia. Melanie Schneider, Coastal Gas Link. Eric Kennedy, Coastal Gas Link. All right, moving on to consent agenda. Recommendation, please. Uh, Councilor Norbury. That all items in the October 4th, 2021 consent agenda be moved for information. Seconder. Councilor Lehman. All in favor? Opposed? Any opposed on the phone? Carried. Thank you. Is any items council would like to lift from the consent agenda? Discussion? Councilor Norbury? Uh, 7.6, Your Worship. Take it easy now. <laughs> 7.6 for discussion. Seconder? Councillor Lehman? All in favor? Opposed? Very, thank you. Councillor Norbury? Thank you, Your Worship. <coughs> so, we, uh, we have a letter from Mr. Durant on his uh, sad departure. Um, I know when we get these things in from our residents, it's good to address them. And um, I know I've had an ex opportunity to know Mr. Durant and, and feel his presence in our community and I want to thank him for all of his his hard work and dedication to our community and good luck in his future. Absolutely I, I concur on that I I uh, knew David quite well and uh, it's very sad to hear him leaving Tumblr Ridge he has contributed a lot to the community not only nonprofits but also as a member of Pattern um, so it is it is sad, but it's also an opportunity for future endeavors as well. So I look forward to, to speaking with him in the future again. Um, Council, any other comments? Okay. Councillor Lee. Well, I was just, he did a lot of volunteer work in his community. He also liked the, the Mother's Day breakfast and all of the mm -hmm. stuff that he brought for. So he's done quite a bit for this community. and. I know he's he's planning on continuing that, but uh, he did quite a bit, so he'll be missed. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Uh, any other items on the consent agenda? Councillor Kirby. Thank you, Mayor Bertrand. Uh, Seven point four. For discussion. Seconder, Councillor Krukalka. All in favor? Opposed? Any opposed on the phone? Carry, thank you. Councillor Kirby. Thank you, Mayor Bertrand. Um, that council support the um, motion or the letter um, extending the permit to 2026 for Kodiak Ridge Limited? Are you making a motion? Yeah. Mo yeah, yeah okay. to support. So moved. Uh, seconder, Councillor Krakowka. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Any opposed on the phone? Carried, thank you. Any other items on the consent agenda council would like to look? Okay, moving on to bylaws, <clears throat> excuse me, 8.1, permissive tax exemption bylaw number 706, report dated October 4th, 2021 from the Director of Finance with the permissive tax exemption bylaw number 706. Recommendation, please. Councilor Kirby. Thank you, Worship. I will move that Council gives first reading to District of Tumbler Ridge permissive tax exemption bylaw number 706, 2021. Seconder, Councilor Majinski. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Any opposed on the phone? Carry, thank you. Second recommendation, please. Councillor Norbury. Thank you, Your Worship. The Council gives second reading to the District of Tumbler Ridge Permissive Tax Exemption Bylaw number 706, 2021. <clears throat> Seconder, Councillor Majinski. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Any opposed on the phone? Carried, thank you. Third recommendation, please. Councillor Majinski. Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> the Council gives a third reading of the District of Tumber Ridge <clears throat> Permissive Tax Exemption Bylaw Number 706, 2021. Seconder. <clears throat> Councillor Kirby. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Any opposed on the phone? Carried, thank you. 
New business 9.1 budget variance report as of September 20th, 2021. Report dated October 4th, 2021 from the Director of Finance with the budget variance report as of September 20th, 2021. Recommendation, please. Councilor Kirkalka. The council accept the budget variance report as of as at September 2021 for information or discussion. So information. Is there any councillors that wish to discuss? Okay, for information, seconder. Councillor Kirby. All in favor? Opposed? Any opposed on the phone? Carried, thank you. Thank you to staff for this report. It's very informative. Thank you. Those are the ones I look forward to. 9.2 Development Permit DP 21 02 Tumble Ridge Global Geopark. Report dated October 4th, 2021, from the Director of Corporate Services regarding the Development Permit DP 21 01 Tumble Ridge Global Geopark. Recommendation, please. Elsa Kirby. Thank you, Your Worship. I'd like to move that the report from the Director of Corporate Services, Redevelopment Permit DP 21 01 Tumbler Ridge Global Geopark Society, be received and further that staff be authorized to issue development permit number 21 01 for Tumbler Ridge Global Geopark Society, permitting the construction of a geo interpretive center. Seconder. Councillor Norbury. Discussion. Councilor Majinski. Thank you, Mayor Bertrand. Um, do we have a, a finalized uh, construction uh, build? Plan? Plan? I believe it's attached. Uh, yeah, it's on page 48. Oh, it's on the back side. Okay. I believe this is the most recent. Um, Proposal that we received as a delegation a few months ago. <clears throat> and it looks like in the concept they have the caboose incorporated in it when they decided they were going to hold back on that project. Uh, I think, I don't believe there was a hold back on it. I think they were um, asking if. Um, the district still wanted to in, to include the caboose in that area, or or if we wanted it moved. I'm not 100 percent sure, Miss Thompson. Thank you, Member Trent. So the it was determined that the caboose was gifted to the district of Tumbler Ridge, and in the planning, the Geo Park had said had asked if the district would be willing to move it at that time. And when they were presenting their plan, they said because of the doorways on the caboose, it would be the last stage of any, if they were going to do any development of it, it would be in the last stage just because it was not accessible. Right. Okay, thank you. Any comments, questions? Okay, call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Any opposed on the phone? Carried. Thank you. 9.25, a discussion about BC Ambulance. Councillor Krakowka. I'd just like to move it for discussion. Seconder. Councillor Lehman. All in favor? Opposed? Any opposed on the phone? Carried. Thank you. Councillor Krakowka. Yeah, so I apologize. Um, this came up out of the uh, Mayor's Health Task Force meeting last Thursday. <clears throat> Some discussion came from Northern Health Reports with this Millie. And she just started talking about BCM and wanting the phone removed from the emergency door. Uh, seemed to be a concern of paramedics showing up at the health center, uh, being in initial contact at the door. <clears throat> so she was supposed to supply some background information. I assumed it was going to be on the Friday, but it didn't come. So I emailed her on the weekend. I didn't hear back from her. She emailed uh, about another reason this afternoon in regards to a, a nurse possibly coming for a site visit to Tumbler Ridge, so I emailed right back asking for the background information. So I sent it to the rest of council later this afternoon. 
I think we should just address Unless it. more participants join, this conference will end in five minutes. Enter star one to cancel and continue the conference. I think we should address it through BC. I'm just supposed to find clarity there. So my understanding from Melanie at the meeting was it was a phone issue. You didn't want people to show up to claim to be able to call. Main menu. <clears throat> to exit and return to conference at any time, press star. For conference agent, uh, enter star zero. zero. To mute or unmute all participants, star nine. To lock the conference, star four. To unlock, star five. To mute or unmute online, star six. For a list of participants in conference, star pound two. Entry and exit announcements, star pound five. Start or stop recording, star pound six. Conference hang up, pound seven. To enable or disable conference hang up and last moderator, so how are you set, there? pound eight. Project billing code, star pound seven. To record a welcome message, pound two. Enable or disable sub conference, I didn't think it was going to go on that long. Sorry. Tell us conferencing. To join the conference, enter your access code followed by the number sign. We might have missed Council Howe on everything. No, I should. At the tone, please state your name followed by the number sign. No. Still District of Tumbler Ridge. Thank you. Announcing participant. Oh. District of Tumbler Ridge. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> okay. Okay, Councillor Krakowka. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, so she was just talking about it. It was this phone issue with it being in her emerge doors and, and stuff like that. I mean, again, I apologize for the late email. I was hoping to have it to council on the weekend. Um, so they had time to read it. Maybe we could have had something printed so it would have been the agenda or at least on our desk. But I think we need to get clarity from BC Ambulance. So, I, mean, I know we don't run Northern Health, but we definitely need to have the um, outlook for our own residents that need help, whether it's through 911, seeing a doctor, seeing a nurse, whatever it may be, but also tourists or people traveling into our community or in our backcountry. So just from the from part of the email that was sent, the contact started in July 20th, 2021. And we heard about it um, Thursday at the meeting. So there's definitely a breakdown there in communication. Um, we, Council Lehman sits on the committee as well. I think we hammer at home every meeting and it just seems to, I don't know if it's on deaf ears or what, but uh, about being open and transparent with the committee so that we can assist instead of being the last minute because this was supposed to take effect October 1st. So just want to read a part of it at the end of the paragraph in the, in the email. There was a meeting between Northern Health and BCHS, Northern Leadership team to discuss this change. BCEHS informed Northern Health that this change would come into effect October 1st, meaning the community paramedics in Tumbridge Ridge and Valmont, there was a two locations, so Valmont, BC and Tumbridge Ridge are the only ones that have this happen today will no longer be responding to the outside after hours clinic phone. ECHS reasoning is due to current paramedic staffing levels. The cost incurred when a paramedic responds to one of these calls, i.e. both paramedics are paid four hours when act activated to respond to the health center call. <coughs> and the change in the last bargaining collective agreement which would require 24 hours off for paramedics that work overtime resulting in staff shortages. So, Listening to Melly on Thursday, it was like they were talking about taking the phone off or dismantling it or putting some information out there. And I, I personally asked through the committee to please hold off. Don't do that. Let's like hopefully be able to discuss through council that this becomes political now and the safety of our residents or anybody that comes into our area. So I don't know where to go with it, but I mean, I think the first step should be getting hold of BCMs. I know we've already asked staff to get in contact with BCMs to have delegation come. I don't think we can wait for that delegation. Like this is literally putting residents at risk. <clears throat> we talked about two scenarios at that meeting. Um, Dr. Helm brought one up right away. 
there's that phone is saved for sure that I know that being on BCM is before I retired. Two residents have told me one was a stabbing victim and one was as a allergic reaction. The phone would not have been there. Those people probably would not have been there. They were able to grab the phone down, which connects right to 901. Obviously something must be going on, so they set the ambulance in there. So I just like to hear from rest council what our thoughts are. I mean, it, it's a it's a concerning thing for me as a resident, not just that, but as a as a counselor mm -hmm. by far. Absolutely, uh, Councillor Hal. Yeah, uh, can you hear me there? Oh, yeah, a uh, little bit. Speak up, please. Yeah. Uh, so my only real concern with this uh, is what happens when the beavers chew through our internet line and we don't have cell service again in Tumbler Ridge. I mean, that was an absolute lifesaver for people in Tumbler Ridge to be able to go down and pick up that phone and get a hold of somebody. Uh, you know, it's the redundancies that we don't have it within our system that we need to keep. Uh, so, so to me, I think Council Krakowka, I'm glad to see that this one didn't slip through the cracks and that uh, you're doing uh, an awesome job catching that stuff. Uh, but absolutely, I think a letter needs to go out that instead of them implementing these things, they should be coming to us through these committees that we spend copious amounts of time on uh, to let us know what's going on rather than just, you know, ramming it down your throat. It's just another thing uh, getting shoved down your throat here. So uh, that, that that's my two cents on it. It's an absolute lifesaver. We need to keep it. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Majinski, then Norbert. Thank you, Mayor Bertrand. Yeah, thank you very much Council, for bringing this forward and, and uh, no harm done by being so late in the evening to get it. Um, there's a, it's, it's putting people that have a disadvantage of not even being able to own a cell phone. How are they going to get in contact to the clinic when it's closed in off hours? So that phone is absolutely necessary to be there. Uh, not in, you know, there's circumstances where you don't have your phone on you or you don't own one, you can't afford one, whatever. So how do those people get emergency access and help? So that's <laughs> the number one right there. So if they're going to take that away, then what are they going to provide for us instead? Full-time coverage, you know? And what's the difference if somebody does have a cell phone and they're standing right beside it and calling in with his cell phone? Somebody's still got to open the door. If it's a 911 call, it has to be attended to. Okay, uh, Councillor Norbury and Lehman. Thank you, Mayor Bertrand. Um, <clears throat> Councillor Majinski hit on the, you know, one of the points that I wanted to make. It's, it makes perfect sense. Someone's going to call 911. The paramedic's going to come out anyways. So they're trying to save money, but someone's still going to make that 911 call. You know, my frustration is that we're putting thousands of dollars from our community into the healthcare system. We're subsidizing them, and they're, they're taking more and more away. This is outrageous that we are going to receive even less adequate care substandard care in our community where own where nobody else does like it's just this shuffle of responsibility that is can't be allowed to happen it's it's ridiculous that um you know there's only two communities that won't have a phone that we don't even have coverage people you know, we're looking at our community's future and health care is a big issue and uh now like if uh, their ability to get care after hours or weekends are in danger, and that's just not right. That's all I can think of. It's just not right. I agree. Uh, Councilor Lehman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's like uh, Councilor Kakawa said, we've, we've been talking with Northern Health right. over the years, and it's always, it seems to be a breakdown of communication. Either we don't get the information in a timely fashion, and we keep asking them questions over and over. We don't, we, it's hard enough trying to get answers from them, but then they just seem to just ignore like, Daryl's emails or our questions, and we just get lip service. And then it's frustrating as I'll get out. And like, even, I think it was just over a month ago, there was a kid outside to, the clinic and he was trying to call, use the phone, but it didn't work. So I ended up having the phone 911 and I waited for a paramedic to show up. Like, it's, I can't understand why they would take or attempt to take that phone away because it's just waiting for somebody to 
have a bad accident or where somebody's going to die. It's stupid. Councilor Krakowka? Yeah, so just a couple of things. So I, I mean, I, I apologize if I stepped out uh, my job as a council, but I did ask Melanie to please have Northern Hell not remove that form until we could have this meeting. I mean, I think that's a lifeline. So, so two things come out of this, and, and, and one of them, I read the bottom part of the paragraph. So let's just read the start of the paragraph, the start of the email. So uh, I'm not sure if this is word, word, word for word coming from BCHS, or if this is Melanie writing her own email. But in early July of 2021, Tumbridge DNT Center was notified via by BCHSS, or sorry, BCEHS, that in the fall, paramedics will no longer be responding to their outside after calls, after hours clinic phone. Will no longer. I'd like to know how BC ambulance thinks they can make that call. So I have a big issue with that. So again, and this isn't against staff, but my question to staff would be: Have we contacted BC ambulance? yet in regards to a delegation. Ms. Thompson. Thank you very much, Chancellor Council. We have, um, they have requested more information on for the delegation, and we received that today. So we haven't responded as of yet today. Councilor. Is that a close contact, like Prince George contact, if I may ask? Ms. Thompson. It's for the director So the reason I ask that is when I see the wording, they will no longer be responding to that. That is very, very concerning. <laughs> Not only as a resident, taxpayer, but as a counselor, but also loving this community and what we have in our backcountry. So I guess they're <clears throat> willing to take the responsibility on themselves by saying they will no longer respond to that. If something happens over that clinic and, and man, please don't let it happen if somebody does upset that so I suggest us as a council of direct staff immediately to contact who there, whoever the lady was to, I, I mean, I forward the email on to our CAO, so she has that email to maybe, I would not just email them. If we have a phone number, I would hope we'd get in contact with them first thing in the morning to get clarity on that. Is this the case? Because we're asking you not to do this. We're asking you to, council is asking you to continue to respond until this can be dealt with in a delegation. And to me, if they get a no back, from this individual, I think immediately the special meeting is called or we make a motion tonight that we get in, in contact with the Minister of Health, Deputy Minister of Health, the PRRD, everybody. I mean, for all I care, get all the news cameras because I think they got enough bad publicity in the South. When you can't get an ambulance for three or four hours and they're getting the same thing in Tom Bridge. Very, very scary. Very scary. I agree. Councillor Kirby. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Councillor Krakowka brought up my concern, and that was with the first paragraph, which was just as scary as the last one. Hmm. So, yes, I think action needs to be taken ASAP on this matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm just contemplating, you know, we, through the Mayor's Health Task Force, we have been focusing on a, a building that collaboration and relationship with Northern Health, and maybe we should be reaching out and, and inviting somebody from BCEHS to join us on that task force, possibly. Um, maybe that might uh, bridge some of the communication gaps that we're uh, currently dealing with. Um, but yeah, I completely agree. I think that that phone is very vital. It appears to be passing the back a little bit, and uh, it, it also appears that uh, another service is going to be taken away from our community medical services. So. Um, Certainly not in favor of that. So definitely entertain a motion, Councillor Kirkhouse. Yeah, so I, I didn't prepare a motion and I apologize to the council, but also the staff because I was in and seen Ms. Thompson this morning, but again, I didn't have the information yet. So I actually didn't know exactly the background information to this. So I'd be curious what kind of direction staff needs. Besides, you definitely need to contact whoever it's BC Hammers. But my concern is if they say that's how they're gonna do it because that's They've got that up from their upper management. I mean, it's not one individual that runs BC Hammonds, obviously, right? So maybe they're being told whoever this, this lady that the staff has just mentioned has been told that's going to be followed through. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that we have the right motion with the right directives that gives to back to staff so that if this step doesn't work, they can go to the next one. And if that one doesn't work, they go on to the rest. Mm -hmm. Like, it's very important. I mean, I, I I'm sorry, I just, I, I can't grasp it. I can't <laughs> 
You know, we can go to Fort St. John, you go to Dawson, and you can get into a nurse. You hit a button at 2 in the morning, the door opens, the nurse will let you in. We don't have that option in Tumble Ridge, and I'm assuming Bailmont doesn't either, so there must be a DNT as well. So I'd be curious to see what's happening in Bailmont. I mean, I should have called there today, but not time. So I just want to make sure the motion, and I don't want to just wing it, I want to make sure the motion is clear. For staff for the direction that they're going to contact this individual. If they don't get nothing from that individual, they're going to keep proceeding. Ms. Thompson, um, I'm just wondering if we should be crafting this motion for an, a following meeting or should we try and do this tonight? Thank you, Member Trent. If you give us two minutes, um, we can craft it and read it back to council and see if that's what you're okay with. Certainly. Councilor Norbury. Well, while that's happening, Member Trent, I'd like to add, like, <laughs> We've, I think we've shown that we as a council and as a community are willing to go above and beyond what's expected of us. So, I mean, I would be definitely open to hearing from Northern Health, Ministry of Health, BCEHS, how we can help. Right? Like, it's, yes, some of us are in an angry situation, but at the end of the day, we need to be creative. Let's get creative and figure something out. Like, there's some way we can collaboratively um, work together to resolve this issue. That's the ultimate goal. Right, and that's kind of where my thinking is trying to invite somebody to the Mayor's Health Task Force to, to really bridge that gap and try to open that collaboration up. Um, we haven't had a lot of contact with BCEHS, unfortunately, and um, I think we do need to bridge that gap in some way. Uh, you know, even in my mind, even just a letter to BCEHS stating that Mayor and Council are not willing to see any services decline in our community and um, we need um, we need feedback from them as to the reasoning behind some of these actions um, taking away a, a, an ambulance um, you know, and now possibly taking away the phone as well so uh, thank you for bringing this forward councillor Krakowka Councilor. Yeah, so it wasn't being brought forward, really, it was Melanie. So this could have went through the loophole and all of a sudden we would have heard it, the backlash from residents. Mm -hmm. Or their backlash when there was an emergency and it wasn't a good outcome. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I thank them for bringing it forward. I think it would have been a little late. Uh, we did discuss that at the meeting as well. That, you know, this is what we're here for. Like, you know, it's, it's to take stuff back to council. Like, that's an important issue. Never mind, you know, we're short nurses or doctors or lab or x -ray. This is very important. Mm -hmm. Very, very important for our community. Yeah. You talk about taking away a second ambulance. I mean, I believe the previous council to my first term of council in regards with staffing gave a, a, a great deal to BC Ambulance to assist them to keep a second ambulance here when they lost the space that they were renting at one point or another. And then they take it from underneath uh, of council of, the, of that day. With them only not even knowing the ambulance was removed from our community because it was never brought forward by BC Ambulance. Councillor Kirby. Thank you, Mayor Bertrand. So maybe Councillor Krakow, could you know when they when they're talking about um, the bargaining and the collective agreement and the staffing and the and the cost, is it because we're too many phone calls are coming out? You, you know, what's the how do what are we what are we budgeted for 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 say Tumblr Ridge? How many calls can we have a week? Are we at a limit? So it doesn't, you know, what how do they get to that? That we're all of a sudden just going to yeah, take the phone, Councillor. So I can't talk about the agreement as of now because it's yeah. a new one. New one just came into play, <clears throat> but we talked about it at the previous meeting when we talked about um, Chetwin now going to a full time Alpha car, right? So what that's going to do is anybody that works in Tumble Ridge, okay, I won't say that because that'll be up to the staff themselves. But majority of the people that are working in these small centers that are on kilo cars getting paid two bucks an hour on a pager until it goes off and it talks about that in the email that when the pager does go off and they go down to the clinic here and call a nurse because somebody's cut their finger or whatever the, the accident is they get paid for four hours they might be there for 20 minutes get paid for four hours that's a kilo well what's going to happen is these people can't get mortgages and stuff like that two bucks an hour on pager because it doesn't qualify so these people are going to have the opportunity to actually move and transfer to the chatway or wherever some barriers going full time so a lot of these stations are going to go get rid of the kilos for the Fox cars and go to Alpha cars, which are full time. So they're gonna, they know communities like ours is going to start losing staff. So it's, it does talk about that in the email when it comes to shortage of staff 
if they work too much overtime, the, the new agreement states they have to take 24 hours off. It used to be after 16 hours, you got eight hours off. And then they changed it because they held us to the agreement. So I mean, you, if I worked at my, at my business for eight hours, that classifies me as working. So if I worked, if I worked another, another uh, eight hours on Amazon on calls, not just being the four hour you have to be on, then I'm actually timed out. <clears throat> what they found out was, was people were burning themselves out because, oh no, I haven't worked, I haven't done 16 hours straight yet. So then they felt obligated to work. Then it came to a point where you could take, when you feel tired, you can stop. So this new agreement's a total different pay scale, and I don't know it off better. I haven't, I've looked into it a bit because I thought about going back on the ambulance. Because they, they're going to be short, I know they are. They're already starting to make for people in Tumbridge because of these full time stations. Yeah. Ms. Thompson. Thank you, Mayor Bertrand. So the resolution that we have drafted states that council directs staff to contact Director Deb Trombley of BCEHS to request clarification of discontinuing the after hours clinic phone and that staff set up a special meeting for council to discuss the need for this service for the district of Tumbler Ridge and further that a member of the BCEHS be invited to be a member of the Tumbler Ridge Health Needs Task Force. Yeah, I like it. I'm wondering if we should include Northern Health in the meeting with BC just as well, because I don't want to get into a he said, she said sort of thing. I think all three parties should be there, Councillor. Yeah, and I totally agree. Northern Health should be invited for having a meeting, not just to uh, Delhi. But we should also add someone there. To, something in that same motion that if, count, if staff's not getting anywhere by contacting this individual by email or by phone, that they move down the line and we start emailing. The Minister of, of Health, the Deputy Minister of Health, the PRD should be attached to this. They, you know, let's use some backing from the PRD. Like this is, you know, they use us when they need us, and I think this is an opportunity that if we're not going to get anywhere, then we should be adding all the other mayors. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think we should stop there and wait for a special meeting. If we get nothing from this individual, we start moving. Mm -hmm. Or staff, give that direction to staff, they keep going. If not get anything from them, right to the Minister of Health. Then. That's who is giving the money to BCHS. Right. Councilor Marjinski. Thank you, Mayor Bertrand. Uh, so when do you think we should expect a meeting uh, this week, uh, sooner than later? And then when do we enact on it uh, if we don't get a meeting when we like? We, we, I think we should start playing hardball now. Councilor. Uh, I mean, I think it's up to the mayor, but I mean, he uh, calls special meeting at any time. But to me, if BCHS says they can meet tomorrow, you know, whether I'm not a Zoom fan, but whatever. Tomorrow at noon, I'm available. Like, like to me, I'll drop everything. I no business that would be after that. Yeah. Like, that's how important this is. Like, and that phone has saved two lives that I personally know. Dr. Helm talked about those two same incidents. So he is totally against this concept. He spoke about it in our meeting. Totally against it. Um, so I would, like I said, if they say they're available at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, I understand we have a policy that we have to pre advertise 20. We can also waive that. To me, this is that important. I understand if we don't have a quorum, then let's figure that out. It, it really depends on the response from BCHS, I would say. Ms. Thompson? Uh, thank you, Member Trent. So we can, we will contact tomorrow morning. Um, we will make it our priority and we can email council with our response and where we've gone from there and going to and get that set up. I've, I've never had to contact them, so I don't know what their response is, but... Okay, the motion is needed, though. I would say. Councillor Kirkalka. Yeah, probably don't use a clear phone to call them, though. <laughs> might not answer. Um, we need, still need to add something in that motion. If they get nowhere with BC, BC -E -S, that they move directly to the minister. Like, I do not want this thing to die tomorrow. I want to, to me, if they haven't heard, they put a time to it. If they have not heard back from BHS, BC, EHS, by 1 p.m. tomorrow, they move on to the ministry and the deputy ministry. And our RM, RMO, go to Mike Bernier, go to all of them, go to the, go to the, the credit for, for health. Like, I don't want to see this die because they haven't gone got back to our staff because they're too busy as well. And when they see a bunch of emails coming from Dumble Ridge and they're not answering and we start going above them, Maybe they realize that it's probably important they should open that email. I'm sorry, I think this is not important. Oh, I agree. 
Councilor Lehman. Thank you, Mayor. A couple of things. We've already lost one paramedic. He's going to Chetland because it's full time. The other thing is, I don't know why we're waiting to get a hold of Minister Dix because I think we might as well email him at the same time as we do BCEH, EHS. It's, I, I don't think it, it would hurt to yeah. email them or get a hold of them both. CC on all. Yeah. Uh, there's lots of letters that are CC, you know, to a dozen people after the fact. So it's always a good idea to keep everyone in the loop. Yeah, I just think it's, you know, then they're looking at, oh, maybe I better get back to them. Ms. Thompson. Thank you. I will read the full resolution of that edition. The council directs staff to contact Director Deb Trombley, BC EHS, to request clarification of discontinuing the after hours clinic phone, and that staff set up a special meeting with BC EHS and Northern Health for council to discuss the need for this service for the DTR, and that the ministry, Minister of Health, PRD, Mike Bernier, and the Ministry of Health Critic be contacted as well. And further that a member of the BCEHS be invited to be a member of the Tumblr Ridge Health Needs Task Force. I think that captures it all. Well done. Council, any comments? Did you want to move that, Councillor Krakowka? Yeah, I'll move that. Seconder, Councillor Norbury. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Any opposed on the phone? Carried, thank you. 9.3, schedule of meetings. Any issues there, Council? Council. Last talk, we picked location. Ms. Thompson. Thank you. Thank you, Member Trent. Uh, we will be able to hold it at the community center. Okay. Any other comments, questions on the schedule of meetings? Any notice of motions this evening? Okay, and Councillor's business, Councillor Norbury. Thank you, Mayor Bertrand. <clears throat> so I wanted to inform Council and our community of, um, give an update on the South Peace Health Services Society, and it is um, dissolved. Go ahead, please. Sorry, Councillor. Uh, I'm wondering if we should wait. I know we're going in to close. I, I didn't see on a, on a conference call that the mayor couldn't make. <clears throat> and I just think we better tr just tow this lightly at first. And I'm just thinking because some things that may be said or not said should be in close at first. This could be a, there could be a liability there, I think, maybe. Okay. I'm just looking at the discussion I've had. So. Okay. No, I, I appreciate your update as well. I thought we can leave it there. I mean, it's sure. um, did my best working with the, the society, but um, unfortunately, We've had a lot of turnover the last year. Um, our current president didn't feel that they were up to the, um, didn't have the time commitment to it. So, um, and then that sort of was the, the domino effect created. And um, yeah, so hopefully, Baltry's house is not lost. It won't be lost in the shuffle. Um, okay. Hopefully we have more information about that in the future. Okay, thank you. Any other counselors business? I had a couple of meetings today, a uh, meeting with BC Oil and Gas Commission, uh, as well as another meeting with the Tumblr Ridge Museum Foundation and all of the nations in our area in regards to the uh, tree mask repatriation. Um, that seems to be going well. Um, there is a bit of um, conflicting views, um, but there was also a suggestion on the table and uh, it, the dialogue is, is going well, and um, yeah, it, it's nice to get everybody together and, and um, start to collaborate on things like this. So it was good. Um, 
And oh, and we also had the urban design guidelines workshop today. Uh, I think that's going quite well. That's all for me. Oh, PRD on Thursday, and uh, healthcare scholarship meeting on Friday at the regional district. Yeah, that's all my business. Any other councillor's business? Okay. Question and answer period. Ms. Thompson, did you receive any? I have none. Okay, thank you. Resolution to close meeting. I'll move that the meeting be closed to the public in accordance with the community charter section 91 C, E, and J as follows. C is labor relations or other employee relations. E is the acquisition, disposition, or expropriation of land or improvements if the council consider that disclosure could reasonably be expected to harm the interests of the municipality. J is information that is prohibited or information that if it were presented in a document would be prohibited from disclosure under section 21 of the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. Seconder? Councillor Lehman? All in favour? Opposed? Any opposed on the form? Carried, thank you. 10 minute recess, please. thing is, is that what he does now is <laughs> oh, same thing. <laughs> oh, he's oh, a yeah. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> 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 <laughs>